If I drive for you, you give me a time and a place, I give you a five minute window. Anything happens in that five minutes and I'm yours, no matter what. I don't sit in while you're running it down. I don't carry a gun. I drive. What the flick, everybody? Welcome to the show. If you're excited to see Drive with Ryan Gosling and Carrie Mulligan, because you're going to expect a lot of people driving, <laughs> vroom, you'll be disappointed. You, you yeah. might be a little disappointed. Unless what you, because what really happens is just a tremendous amount of driving. Right. Like, <laughs> not so much chasing and turning it. It's more. Easing into first, look both right. ways, exactly. check the mirrors. Exactly. <laughs> but anyway. Not quite driving, Miss Daisy. <laughs> no, not quite. Just, just driving. Like I'm going but closer to drive. that than, say, Fast and Furious. Uh, okay, uh, Matt, you're describing. So uh, Ryan Gosling plays a stunt performer, who a stunt driver, who moonlights as a wheelman uh, for organized crime, shadowy figures. Uh, he moves after every heist that he takes part in. Uh, we catch him as he's moved into a new building up the hall from... Uh, Michelle Will no, Carrie Mulligan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you just moved to LA? No, I've been here for a while. What do you do? I drive for movies. Is that dangerous? It's only part time. You put this kid behind the wheel, there's nothing he can't do. Kid, I want you to meet Mr. Bernie Rose. My hands are a little dirty. So am I. What's the job? When you get your money, his debt's paid. You never go near his family again. <gasps> Did you have any idea there'd be a second car? He said there'd be another car to hold us up. Whose money do I have? I'm gonna tell you something. Anybody finds out we're both dead. That's why this driver's gotta go, Bernie. He's gotta go. So let me say something quick about that, because we saw some of that first scene there. Mm -hmm. uh, the movie opens with uh, almost no speaking, but you, you mentioned what he does. It was his moonlight job. Right. He's sort of driving for bandits. Right. Um, and there he is driving, waiting for the... Uh, waiting for the bandits to come out right. of whatever they've stolen. He waits exactly five minutes. Right. It's a cool premise. He sets a watch. He doesn't care about them. He just cares about the job. And then he, there's an elaborate escape from the cops, very sophisticated escape right. from the cops. I thought that was sensational. Like I was, it th was. this movie, it was yeah. headed 13 minutes in or whatever it is, eight minutes in, this movie for me was headed for a nine, nine and a half. I thought it was sensational. But then that was the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the movie. Um, I, I, here's the thing. I'm not a big Michael Mann fan, but I think if you are, you'll dig this movie. Because for me, I liked so much of it, but the style overwhelmed me after a while. There's so much, like, the the score is very sort of that right. 80s Vangelis Tangerine Dream thing, and all the sort of night shots of L.A., and the satin jacket, and the even the, the opening titles. Like, there's all this right. 80s stuff going on. The 80s thing does get on. overwhelming at times. Like, it yeah. does, you know, the opening credits, like, it... it Beats you into the ground. That all the should, songs are very right. synthy, you know, right. and and it just kind of I just found it really distracting from what was a sort of lean, you know, interesting story. It, it was very uh, directed. I yeah. felt like there was a giant announcement throughout most of it, and and like, but I like well by a very talented person. Yeah, but, I love. But it was Bronson. constantly saying, yeah, Bronson was wonderful. Constantly, constantly saying that he was constantly saying, uh, and this was not like Bronson, but constantly saying, look, look at, yeah, look what I can do. And, right. and afterwards, I would say you're very good. <laughs> no, but <laughs> you his don't later need to film, tell us all the time. But this director's later film, Valhalla Rising, is mm -hmm. very much like this. In right. that it's. Look at me, I'm directing, and it's and it's a cool story. But if you if it does get in the way a little bit, and that's what happens it, here. There, there's a Steven Soderbergh expression that he used in a book once, where he talks about directors who stand between the audience and the screen and wave their arms around, and that's yeah. this yeah, guy, there's, Nicholas there's, Vinding Reffen, 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 however you yeah. say his name. I, and I, you know, a big fan of Bronson. This time, it's it's too distracting, and also. One of the big plot motors here, if you'll pardon the expression, is the is is Ryan Gosling's 
infatuation with Carrie Mulligan. Like he's willing to go through all this stuff so that her ex-con husband and really child up, really can be saved. Totally upend see. his life. Yeah, and their entire relationship is portrayed as these sort of like gooey smiles they exchange. Oh, see, I actually and felt I didn't, completely different about his motivation there. I actually felt like he was more bonded with the kid. Mm. That's what I felt like. I felt like there was this unspoken bond with him and her son, and everything he's doing is for the benefit of the son. And he doesn't really communicate it because it would be kind of inappropriate, but... Well, and that's I, true, and that's actually the better portrayed relationship than right. this, with wife. Because, so I, I, but I, I don't think he does it because he, point, does, he can't compute, uh, communicate that because it's that would be inappropriate. He doesn't communicate it because he doesn't... He doesn't communicate. communicate. Well, well, he doesn't communicate, yeah. but that's the thing, is if you watch the movie, he doesn't. He's very, he's very terse, he's very silent with almost everyone he talks to, but you see the kid show up and start talking to him and his face lights up. And I feel it's a really subtle performance from Gosling. I really liked this movie, although, you know, as you said in the introduction, this is not a chase movie. No. This is not no. an action movie. And I think people are gonna come out of this movie really pissed because they're marketing it like It is like being it's, sold, yeah, as, as, as right. a Fast and no, Furious this kind is, of This is an 80s thing. style film noir. I thought there was a lot of 70s in the directing. Like to me, I saw the getaway in the directing and I saw- Well sure, and Two Lane Blacktop yep, and The yep, Driver, yep, right. which, which incidentally both of those movies have Protagonists who are just named the driver and Ryan Gosling doesn't have a name either. So yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, see, this movie made me think of Manhunter, and it made me think of the, To Live and Die in L.A. Like, yeah, yeah definitely. Live and Die in LA. definitely. It made me think of Bright Lights, Big City. Like, with the music. <laughs> sure. Um, okay. Um, just the like the title. The thumpa thumpa. Yeah. The thumpa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, Albert Brooks is great in this movie. Yeah. Uh, that is like one of my favorite performances this year. No, as, I think. And and not the usual Albert Brooks what you've seen before. He's a very scary. Right. Monster Everyone guy. is good. No, He's Brian Cranston is great. Yeah. Brian Cranston is great. Ron, Perlman. Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman. Ron's fun. Yeah. When is Ron Perlman not good? True. Christina Hendricks briefly is. Uh, briefly, yeah. I, you know. Well, here's a good example of how they're marketing this movie wrong. Not only are they acting like it's some thriller, they're going big with Christina Hendricks. In, Who, yeah, who's barely who's, in. Who's it. in this movie for a total of what five minutes? Maybe? She's really good, but but not yet. There's not a lot of her in it. I. Uh, but what I. I just think it slowed down too much. There were. But you, we talked about the the terseness of their relationship. Is interesting uh, initially, and then it becomes like I mean, they are, there's a lot. We see every second of every pause and bit of awkwardness in their discussions. Right. And Script we see by it, Harold Pinter, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we and we see it four or five times, just with a lot of. Yeah, there's always about th three yeah. beats right. before. And then they, like, yeah, oh, they all oh, hands. Oh my God! <laughs> I didn't have as much no. of a problem with that as you guys did. But I still cared about it. I just didn't. We knew so little about him, and then there's this significant change in him to where we think he's sort of he. he yeah, he's tangentially in, in crime. He clearly is not involved in hurting anyone. Those are his right. rules. He doesn't carry doesn't a gun. Carry a gun. He right. just drives. Right. If you're not ready in there's five minutes. There's some mysterious he, past. And that. then all of a sudden we learn that he's he's much more much more complicated. But that didn't seem. Incredible! It was just sort of sudden that he has this sort of uh, d potential for violence. Oh, see, I, I didn't have a problem with that because there's a point where early on in the film where Cranston, his boss, mentions, you know, he shows up and he works on cars and he, he's amazing. There's some background well, to this guy. Th there is a slow build to the violence because at the beginning he's like this complete blank slate and then there's that scene where the guy comes up to him in the diner and tries to talk to him, uh, talk business yes, with him right, and yes, he threatens yes, to like kick true. his teeth in. So I, I, I didn't mind that. I thought there was, there was they, they, they kind of let, let you know little by little what this guy's capable of. So and 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 this is a director who I think has it really handles as opposed to say Rod Lurie in Straw Dogs masculine violence in a really interesting way. So that part I bought, but I just thought that um, as the movie progresses, it's just it's so uh, again just just drowned in the style. You know, it was it was like it was like watching Marie Antoinette, where I was like, oh, could we just right. not enough with the filigree and just tell me the damn story right. already? The story. You know? It was so much like Marie Antoinette. Well, I just I think it's it's it is over art directed the in, the, exactly. in the way that Marie Antoinette was. It just that, that was what just, it made me think the, of. I, I'm dwelling on it too much, but the 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 subtlety lost in him, the greatness in what we saw in that Ryan Gosling character in the beginning. By the end of the film, when he's just like walking around in a bloodstained jacket and he doesn't care where the police are there's a carelessness to him that I just I, I found incongruous that oh, bothered me it, it took away from a film that in general that uh, by the way I, and I don't know that we're making this clear that I liked and cared about what happened in the end but it literally I mean it started at an A and I kept thinking if it goes 20 more minutes it's gonna keep dipping like stop <laughs> and, 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 it, and it ended in time for me to still like it. well good All right, numbers I, I think there's a, there's a lot to like here, but it ultimately didn't work for me, so I'll, I'll say six. 
Uh, not at all what I expected, not the action movie I was expecting, but I still really like this. I give it a 7.5. Now the performances were really great, and I was totally interested in what would happen at the end, and I, I just, uh, again, wish it had stayed a little truer to what was a sensational beginning. Yeah. Uh, I gave it a 6.3, so we're up to a 6.6, 6, so, uh, which I feel good, like yeah, that we're saying, yeah, go, yeah. See, go see Drive, talk about it afterwards with your friends, or anyone. All right, uh, if, you you have friends. if you don't have friends. <laughs> if you don't have friends. What do we have next week? Uh, next week is uh, what? Abduction and uh, the Killer Elite? The Killer Elite and Moneyball. And Moneyball. Oh, okay. Moneyball. Oh. Something. We'll, we'll be back. Andrew, can you look more hungover? Uh, I'm very impressed. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> really laughing, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> a greasy pork sandwich <laughs> in a dirty ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Me too. <laughs> <laughs>